Now, of course, there was a lot of for different reasons, controversy surrounding the DCEU. Uh, going right back to the beginning of them, when Zack Snyder created what I believe to be the most underrated comic book film of all time, the masterpiece that is Man of Steel. I, I love that film so much. Now, the controversies continued once he did Batman vs. Superman, which raised a big question with a lot of fans. Would Batman kill people? Because there's a lot of people out there who believe that Batman would never ever, under any circumstances, no matter what, ever, from all of past to all of future, ever kill somebody. And Zack Snyder is kind of like, well, this Batman does, which which brought up a lot of debate. Now, Zack Snyder re-raised this debate on uh, the Joe Rogan podcast the other day, when basically, you know, with headlines like this, we see that, you know, he's doubling down, saying, hey, listen, I just really believe Batman would and should kill. And he brings up a very interesting point. And and here's why I think that what Snyder is talking about right here is relevant right now. Because we are getting ready to start a brand new DCU. And we're going to get a brand new Batman. And this question, I believe, is going to be a part of the discussion. Is this Batman going to be one that obviously is not looking to go out and mass murder people? But is this going to be a Batman that given a terrible set of circumstances, this Batman would kill people. Now, Zack Snyder tells this really interesting story about how like when WB first was talking to him, when they were getting ready to make Batman versus Superman, and they said, there's a rule, Batman doesn't kill. Which, by the way, is not historically accurate. In the comic books, Batman has killed. Uh, we'll, we'll go into that in just a second. But they said, okay, Batman doesn't kill, that's that's uh, canon. And to which Zack Snyder kind of replied, and I'm paraphrasing, it's like, well, like there are going to be situations where maybe Batman would have to kill. And some of the WB executives at the time said, well, just don't put Batman in a situation where he'd have to do that. And Zack Snyder took issue with that. And I got to admit, I take issue with that too. Because to say that Batman has this absolute code that he's deadly, commi- <laughs> deadly, that he is fiercely committed to. He won't kill, but you're just telling me as a storyteller, never put him in a situation where that might be the only option. Like to me, that's like, like somebody saying, I would never steal from the bank, but this is a person who has never been and never would be in a position where they even could. So what value is there saying, I have this code, if you never, or or some man saying, I would never touch a woman. Okay, that's great, but you live on an island with all men. So it's great for you to say, I have this code. And and Snyder took issue with that. I said, like, what what are we doing here? If we're just saying he does that, but we're only going to accomplish that by never putting him in a position. And you know what? That manifested itself in Man of Steel. When Superman, at the end, Zack Snyder decided to put Superman in an impossible situation. It's him versus Zod. He knows that Zod is now proclaimed, my mission in life now is to kill every human being on Earth. That's now my mission. I'm going to kill every every human being on Earth. And I'm going to start with this little family starting in the standing in the corner. Superman won't be able to stop him. He'll be able to slow him down here and there. He'll be able to wrestle him, whatever, but he's dealing with a lifelong military guy and he was put in a position where it's like Superman either has to allow the deaths of hundreds of thousands, millions or billions, or he's got to kill Zod. Or he's got to kill Zod. Superman did what Superman would do. He made the horrible choice to kill Zod because the only other alternative was letting Zod kill tons of other people. And I got to say... I agree with Zack Snyder on this. Not not the Superman issue per se, but with the Batman issue. That Batman would kill. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to go that far back in comic book history. Just back like to the years of Jason Todd as, as Robin. There was this one, I often go back to this one, but Batman's talking to Jason Robin. He says, I'm not a murderer, son. Murder is the line we must not cross. To which Jason says... You've killed before. To which Batman's response is, in self-defense, Jason, you're well aware that we play a dangerous game, a game I perhaps should not have involved you in. Right? I shouldn't have brought my adopted son into this <laughs> I life of a vigilante. shouldn't have brought a child into a what? world of mass murderers? Go figure. <laughs> hmm. 
Oh, the parental instincts of Batman. <laughs> um, I mean, so clearly he has killed in the comics. He has justified killing in the comics and stuff like that. And of course, now you then you can say, yeah, okay, John, that's fine. But recently in the comics, Batman has this unbreakable code. Okay, that's fine. But I've always, I've always said this. Like, I remember this one comic book story, and you, you guys who have followed me for any period of time have probably heard me reference this story. But there was one comic issue I'm reading. This is very, very representative of Batman. Batman's, you know, hunting down these thugs who hide out in kind of an abandoned, broken down house. And one of them's upstairs. And Batman, of course, comes out of the shadows of the rafters, grabs the guy. And it wasn't quite a rock bottom, but it kind of looked like a Dwayne the Rock Johnson rock bottom. Heaves the guy up or, or uh, not the tombstone, but what's the one when... <laughs> When the Undertaker picks him up by one hand and then choke slam. The choke slam. It was kind of more like a choke slam. It was a cross between a, a rock bottom and choke slam. He picks up this thug, and of course he slams him so hard that, and this is an old decrepit house, the villain, the, the thug breaks through the floor and falls like 10, 12 feet onto the ground. And you hear you see Batman's thought bubble. Four broken ribs, a ruptured spleen. He'll be in traction for months. It's like, oh, okay. But you see, the this is a representation of how the comic book writers cheat so Batman can have this code. Because if you were to pick up a human being and rock bottom them through a decrepit floor, down 12 feet, onto a concrete floor, listen, a million things outside of Batman's calculations could have happened. A piece of wood could have been angled a certain way on the bottom. His head could have cracked on the floor first. All the Basically, if that happened, that dude would have died. But the comic book writers cheat and they say, no, he doesn't die. He's just going to be in traction. Batman can do everything that will kill people, but the writers just give him an out by saying, but he just hospitalized. They're them. fine. Yeah. And you know what? That's fine. That's fine in the comic books. You can do that in the comic books. It becomes a much harder sell when you're trying to have any sort of, to quote Rob, verisimilitude, any sort of reality. And so I am going to be perfectly okay if James Gunn decides to adopt the modern interpretation of Batman that under no no set of circumstances will Batman ever, you know, allow his actions to lead to the death of another person. Okay, I, I'll be fine if James Gunn wants to do that. But I would also be fine if James Gunn decided to embrace a wider philosophy of Batman through the longer period of time of Batman, where it's like, look, yeah, Batman absolutely does not want to kill. But under certain circumstances, whether it's by accident because of his extreme violent nature or because of a no-win situation he's placed in that he does. And I th happen to think Zack Snyder is bang on about this as we head into the new era of Batman. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that disagree, and that's fine. I'm just telling you history of what they've done in the comics and what seems to me to make sense. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Factor. You know guys, some days it's great to prepare your own meal, but some days it's great to have wonderful, delicious meals already ready to go. Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals makes eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. They've got snacks, smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day like breakfast, midday bites, and more. And guys, you get to save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So guys, head to factormeals.com slash campia50 and use the code campia50 to get 50% off. That's code campia50 at factormeals.com slash campia50 to get 50% off. Anyway, Chris, you know, you've followed this debate that's been going on now for a couple of years as well. Mm -hmm. We're moving into a new era of DC. James Gunn's about to introduce us to a new Batman. Is Zack Snyder right or wrong that... If you're going to try to have any kind of realism to a Batman, you have to be okay with him killing? Yes, no, what do you think? 
I understand why he says this. I do want to just illuminate, as also the author of this Gizmodo article does, is he did say this on the Joe Rogan podcast. So there is a very specific type of audience that he wants to appeal to. Yeah, we kill. Yeah. We kill. But this is stuff. This is also reflecting stuff he has yeah, said for years. Yeah, he said this before. Right. But, but nice this particular <laughs> little, little clip there, though, is like, yeah, that makes sense. That tracks. Um, I can understand all of this. From a comic book standpoint, uh, Batman has potentially killed before, too, that we've seen, or it's been alluded to, right? Killing Joke. The idea of that right. Alan Moore piece is that at the end, he probably does kill the Joker. But we also have other things like the Dark Knight Annual, where we have the Joker begging for Batman to kill him. Release us both from this torment we're both in. Right. Release us both from yep. this game. And what's so interesting, then, is Batman counters with, oh, I want to kill you. I want to kill you more than anything I've ever wanted in my life, but I believe in the sanctity of life above all other things, so I won't. And he talks about that ad nauseum throughout the comics. It's that fine line that will separate him from the people who murdered his parents, from the other thugs and criminals of Gotham's underbelly, and the only thing that can keep him from full darkness, right? Now, I think you can explore that world, though, of hey, if we are working within the parameters of what's real in the real world, still with comic book kind of allowances, right? What Batman can or can't do physically to somebody. You have those moments then of, does he stop pulling a punch? Does somebody else have to intervene? Does he cross a line ever? That's a really compelling story to explore. I do think one of the more interesting things about Batman though is that fine line to be a hyper violent person who has to continually stop yourself. Because if we do have him start killing people just willy nilly, then we've got a Punisher comic, which is fine. That or an Injustice purpose. Gods Among Us situation. Exactly. And those other characters exist. And I do think that is one of the more interesting things here. And I, I also enjoy that Batman himself views himself and the other heroes as people who could potentially need to be put down. I think that any form of corrupted power bothers Batman. So I feel like you can explore it, but I think the moral code is one of the things that is just very integral to the character. That's just me as a comic book fan, but I can understand other people saying, hey, let him do it. Let's have a story where that happens. Try it with an Elseworlds, do whatever you want. See, what would be really interesting to me is a Batman that had that code, but then be a little bit more realistic where while pursuing somebody in the Batmobile, and he fires off the rockets, the guy dies as a result. Mm -hmm. Maybe he, di he didn't intend to kill him, he didn't wanna kill him. Maybe when he kicks that thug in the chest, one of his ribs cracks off, goes through his lung. He didn't intend to kill him. I'd be really interested to see a, a movie where Batman has that code, and yet inevitably as the result of the way he conducts himself. You know, Mr. Sunday Movies, I think that's who it is. Mr. Sunday Movies on YouTube made this video once that's basically called the Batman Body Count where it goes through all the previous Batman movies, like oh, going up from the Tim Burton to Christopher Nolan, and like the body count, because he was noticing that a lot of people got upset that Zack Snyder dare had Batman kill people. And Mr. Sunday Movies, I, I actually don't even know what position Mr. Sunday Movies took takes on the issue of Batman killing people, but he did put together this video showing, here's the body count of all the times in all the other movies Batman has clearly killed people, and no one ever said a thing about it. Maybe that's because it was still closer to the age when, in the comics, Batman was still saying he does kill in self-defense. I'm pretty sure in 89 Batman, he's got a body count. Yeah. Oh, in 89 Batman? Oh, yeah. And, and, and in Christopher Nolan's Batman movies and like all well, that kind of stuff. In all superhero movies, unless there is an abandoned warehouse district, like everyone's dying. They are toppling buildings. <laughs> They're doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like you, to your point, the, one of the great things about Batman, and, and I think the greatest manifestation of it is Injustice Gods Among Us. About Injustice Gods Among Us is meant to be like a big cautionary tale too about what happens if one of these heroes, particularly the greatest of them all, Superman, decides to become an executioner. And then the slope that leads them down. And that Batman, like in many ways in the DC Universe, is kind of the dark North Star. He tried, he tried, he understands the dangers. You alluded to, Chris, the story where Batman himself has developed contingency plans in case all the other Justice League members have to be taken down. Uh, and a great line in the animation. And what about you, Bruce? What's the plan for you? You are. Yeah. I, that's such a great Justice line. League. That's a great line. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting. And so I will be one who will be fascinated to see how James Gunn decides to handle this as they move towards it. Question is for you guys. 
What do you think about this discussion? I, I think there's good arguments to be made on, on both sides. I personally tend to agree with Zack Snyder on this, that in a realistic feeling Batman, the things that Batman does will inevitably lead to somebody getting killed here or there. But maybe that's something they work against. Whatever you guys think about this, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.